Login. Emma, original mattress has been Alléluia. Good evening, sir. Good time, I greet you, sir. God bless you, sir. As a family, sir. Fine, sir. How are you doing, sir? How was work today? We thank God. Uh, God is helping us. Amen. Pray well, sir. Amen, sir. Yes, I think it's time. Who is uh, leading? It's already on. So uh, we'll start so that others will be joining us who can okay, always. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are all welcome in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father Mighty, for another day. This day that you have created, Father Mighty that we should be glad in it. We thank you, Father Mighty, for the privilege granted unto us, Father Mighty, to gather here this evening, to call upon your holy name, to hear from you, Father Mighty, to knock at your door, King of glory. As you have said in your word, Father Mighty, that those who go, Father Mighty, come in front of you, those who call upon your holy name, you can never allow them to go back empty-handed. Father, I will pray. 
that as we have gathered here, O oh Lord, to call upon you, to seek your face. Father, you know us more than we know ourselves. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that our gathering here this evening will not be in vain in Jesus' name. King of glory, you know each and every one of us and what we need from you, Father. Nothing is hidden in front of you. There is nothing you don't know and there is nothing you cannot do. Father, we pray, O oh Lord, that as we have gathered, Father, to seek you, in our spiritual life, Father, touch us. In our physical life, Father, touch us. In our spiritual life, Father, touch us, O Lord, King of glory. In our health, Father, touch us, O Lord. In our finances, Father, touch us. And let your name be glorified. Father, you said in your word that we are the head and not the tail. Father, O Lord, we pray. Make us to be the head and not the tail in Jesus' name. I am that I am. We pray for Almighty for your presence. We pray for Almighty for your spirit, O oh Lord, that as we have gathered here this evening, O oh Lord, everything that we are going to do, Father, come and take control. From this prayer, Father Almighty, until the end, O oh Father Almighty, of this service, let your spirit come and lead us. Let your presence come down, Father Mightily, and let your name and only your name be glorified. Eternal rock of ages, I am that I am, we cannot do without you. If we are gathered here, Father mighty, O Lord, at the end, and you are not with us, Father, O Lord, our gathering, Father mighty, is in vain in Jesus' name. Come and help us, O Lord. Come and help us that our gathering, Father mighty, we bear fruit, O Lord. O Father mighty, we glorify you, O Lord, in Jesus' name. King of glory, we pray, Father mighty, O Lord, that as O Father mighty, O Lord, our brethren, Father Mighty, who are still planning to join us, Father, we pray, hasten their part, O Father Mighty. And the grace, Father Mighty, to join us to receive this blessing today, granted to each and every member of this church in Jesus' name. I am that I am, as we continue, Father Mighty, continue with us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Brethren, I want each and every one of us in his own way to open your mouth and begin to glorify the name of the Lord. You know what the Lord has done in, in your life specifically, specially. You know what the Lord has done. Open your mouth and begin to thank him for those things he has done, for those things you are expecting him to do something marvelous. You need to exhort him. Open your mouth and begin to worship him this night. Oh, King of glory, we come in front of you because you are our father. We come in front of you, Father Mighty, because you are our all in all. Father, oh Lord, we worship you, we exalt you, Father. Making us, Father Mighty, to come this evening to call upon your holy name. Many are lavishing in sin. Many are dying in sin. Father, but you have chosen us. You have picked us, Father Mighty, from the dungeon. You have picked us, Father Mighty, oh Lord. For where, oh Father Mighty, we don't know to bring us, Father Mighty, to be able to call upon your holy name. We say thank you, Father Mighty, oh Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. But then I will read in the book of uh, Psalm chapter 23, verse 6. That says, Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow me. They shall follow me. You so, so can, they can follow you, shall follow us. All the days of our life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Brethren, we are going to pray that as we have gathered this evening, that the goodness and the mercy of the Lord will follow us this evening. That we will not go empty handed as we pray earlier. We will not go empty handed. That the goodness of the Lord will locate us. The Lord knows where we need him most. He knows where we need him most. That his goodness will not, oppose, will not surpass us. That the presence will be upon our life. His mercy will accompany us all the days of our life. Open your mouth and begin to call upon the name of the Lord. That his mercy, his presence, his goodness. Oh, we come upon our life this night. Oh, Lord, we come and glorify his holy name upon our life. Brother, open your mouth and pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. And as we call upon him, he's going to answer us. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. His blessing will locate us. His favor will locate us. His kindness will locate us. Pray and open your mouth, open your mouth and pray that, oh, those things, those hindrances, those hindrances, in oh, Father Mighty, in our prayers, that the Lord will overlook it and have mercy. That those things that is between, that is a blockage upon our life, that the Lord will overlook it and let us open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and call upon his name. And as, oh, Father Mighty, we call upon you, we know you are hearing us, I will know you have answered us. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, once more, we thank you, Father Mighty, because it's by your grace that we have gathered here this evening. It's by your grace, Father Mighty, O Lord, that you have given us the privilege to call upon you. Father, we pray that your grace will call up, come upon our life this night and your name will be glorified. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present you, Father Mighty, your servant. You are going to use Father Mighty this evening to speak to us. Father, O oh Lord, use him as an oracle. Use him as an, as an instrument, Father Mighty, to oh, bless your people this night. Father, O oh Lord, wear him like a cloth. Let the anointing from above, Father Mighty, fall upon him. Father, bless him, Father Mighty, with your word this night. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father Mighty, because you know your answer. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The choir. In Jesus' name. Amen. Eternal Lord of Ages, we thank you. We bless your name for another session to come to your presence once again. Father, we ask you, O Lord, as we come, O Lord, you release unto each and every one of us. We ask you, O Lord, that you touch our hearts. And Lord, we pray, O Lord, that you remove every distracted spirit away from us in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, as we also come to worship you, Father, we ask you, O Lord, that you let your presence come and abide with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you and worship you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, how excellent is your name, oh
Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful, Lord, for all that you have done for me. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, I am very, very grateful, Lord, for all you have done for me, oh Lord, I am very, very grateful. I am saying thank you, Jesus. I have a father who will never, never fail me. I have a God who will never fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never, never fail me. Rock of veggies, never, never fail. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Father, who will never, never fail me. Love, I have a God who will never disappoint me. Jesus is my Father. He will never, never fail me. Rock of veggies, never, never fail. I have a God who I have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails forevermore. Amen. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. Jesus never fails, Jesus never fails, forevermore. In the presence of God, hallelujah, joy. 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 Hallelujah, joy. Hallelujah, joy.
Mandela. I need the sea, hallelujah, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My God is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My Lord is good forevermore. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land. And in the sea, on the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah, the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My Lord is good forevermore. The Lord is my portion in the land of the living. My Lord is good forevermore. And we praise the Lord, and we praise the Lord, and we praise the Lord with my heart, heart, with my heart, heart. And we praise the Lord, let us praise the Lord, hallelujah. And we praise the Lord, and we praise the Lord, and we praise the Lord with my heart, heart.
Pastor, we are not hearing you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, sorry, I've, I don't know actually sometimes uh, this uh, computer can be somehow troublesome. So, so the little inconveniences, I think I have two systems here and uh, the one that I'm using for uh, some other activities, it's like it has a uh, freezing the speaker. I don't know what happened. So uh, let's, 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 let's continue. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our most high God, we thank you for a time like this. We thank you for another privilege of coming together to fellowship as a family. We thank you, Lord, for you have made it possible, guiding us throughout the whole day, throughout the whole week, bringing us together tonight for a wonderful blessing. Lord, we pray that your presence, O oh Lord, your power, your anointing, O oh Lord, will abide with us in Jesus' name. Amen. What we're going to do today, Lord, may it be worthy to glorify your name. Anything that will make our fellowship tonight not to be result-oriented, not to be something that will make great impact in the life of everyone, oh Lord, we pray that such will be removed. Because the Bible says that they must surely get up, but not by you, but whosoever that shall get up against us shall fall for our sake. We pray tonight, oh Lord of heaven, that you will lay ambush against every adversary and and, 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 and and send them right down to Abyss, where they will not see, O oh Lord, the packages you have for us tonight, that at the end, O oh Lord, we will all rejoice for your wonderful work. We thank you, we bless our Father, because you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we are going to consider our topic, without wasting much time, provoking God's blessings. Provoking God's, God's blessings. And we're going to read quickly from our text in Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. I will quickly read. It says, So to yourselves in righteousness, reap. A mercy, break up your following, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come down and rain righteousness upon you. So these are the 
word of God that we started the year with. You no, know, uh, this year actually was declared a year of righteousness. And for you to be righteous indeed in the sight of God, certain drastic step, steps will be taken. So here the Bible is, you know, giving us some hints on how to attend to the Lord's righteousness. It says, so to yourself in righteousness, reap in men, break up your fallow ground. You know what fallow ground is all about? I think uh, the, at the beginning of this year, our pastor was able to break it down to, uh, you know, to, to our understanding. You know, a farmer that wants to farm in a land that has been left for many years. So that land, at the process of not cultivating, it, not tilling the ground and softening the, you know, the soil, it will become, you know, a kind of sticky with some rubbish on top. So, and for you to cultivate in such land, you need to, you know, reorganize everything. So that is exactly what it means by breaking up our fallow ground, because we want to sow. We want our fruit that we are going to sow to be, you know, to, to be fruit. Because when we sow our right, obviously, God will bring increase. So that is exactly what it takes for us to meet the Lord in his wonderful mercies and blessings. We need to get away all the rubbish in the heart, all the rubbish in the, in the whole of one's life, to, so as to make sure that there is no death, no spot that the enemy will use as a point of, you know, as, as a kind of accusing finger to hinder the blessings of God. And that is the first step which by the grace of God we were all counseled and instructed at the beginning of this year to do our best to make sure that we attain to this very level for us to expect God's goodness. Because there is no magic about that. If you look at the scripture, if from every angle, Bible make it categorically you know, clear that in righteousness shall now be established. So that is the first step. The second step now being the... the most, having the ability or a, kind, or a kind of free mind to be generous. So generous in the sense, not only when you give money to someone, be open to give out what that is within your disposal. Because that is another powerful key that provokes the Lord. So if you are the type that is a kind of channel of blessing, God will always be pumping in stops to make sure that you, you don't lack in any area. So that is the essence of our topic tonight, to see how to provoke God's blessing. So righteousness, number one. Number two, the, a, a heart, that a willing heart that is able to give out. Because if you look at a pond and you look at a flowing river, a, a pond stagnates and stink because it doesn't give out any. So at the process of time, it becomes useless. But you see a flowing river, even if there are some elements of, you know, uh, 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 rubbish that steps in. At the process of flowing, those rubbish will filter and they will become, you know, the, 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 the water will become useful. So that is the essence of giving. You give out, another one comes in. You give out, another one comes in. So for the sake of our time, we are going to look to this very topic, how we can provoke God's blessings. In three subheadings, number one, bountiful watering of God's kingdom. Number two, believing, waiting for God's kindness. When we believe, we need to we, 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 we need to exercise passion. When we believe, we need to you know demonstrate that really what we are waiting for is something that we are we are sure of. Because if you are waiting for something you are sure of, there is a kind of conviction in your heart that will make you to be well you know that will make you to be stable in thought and in, in, in everything that obviously this is something that will come to pass so these are one of the keys and finally bountiful wealth from our great king god is not a man when we meet to our own i mean uh, our own uh, when we will do our own part we fulfill all the prerequisites all the things that god expects of us obviously on his own part he's always faithful so before we proceed uh, in our first uh, subheading, which is bountiful watering of God's kingdom. In 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Here the scripture says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy is not something that is common. It's something that comes as a result of, you know, our action. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God knows that when you have the mind of doing good to others, you are desiring something good. In Luke chapter 6, Verse 38, bountiful watering of God's kingdom as an important key to provoke God's blessing. In Luke chapter 6, Verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaking together and running over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye met with that, it shall be measured to you again. Praise the Lord. That is the biblical principles of prosperity. These are the things that provokes God's blessing. It says, give, and it shall be given to you, not as you have given, good measure. Pressed down and shaking together and running over. It's like you take a seed, sow it in the, in, uh, in the soil. That seed will not come out single. That seed will come out beyond your imagination. What happened to it? God has fulfilled his word. Without going out there to sow the seeds, at the end of the year, what do you expect? You're expecting harvest, there will be no harvest. But once you've sown, just like a farmer, he will do everything he could within the, seed, within, within the period, within the time, Make sure that he puts something in the soil. The expectation of harvest will not be equal to what he has invested. So that is what gives them joy. So the same way, God, this is the word of Jesus Christ. Bountiful watering of God's kingdom. You are compassionate. You are generous. You are you are you are free-minded when it comes to you know when 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 it comes to not only to believers to aim people of all walks of life. So knowing that he that God says he that give it to the poor, lend it to God. And conclusively say God is not a debtor to any man. So you see, the for Christ to say, give, and it shall be given unto you. It is, is, is something we, I mean, we should not take for granted. Give. He knows that we need. He would have said, well, do all you could. You, you have attended the level of righteousness I expected. That's all right. But that is not qualification for blessings. It gives us that very assurance of heaven. It gives us protection. It gives us, it gives us all what we need. But when it comes to the area of Abundance, you know, it lies in the, you know, the, the, the ability to give. You go out and you sow seed. You go out and you make investment. When you are, when you, if, if, if that investment, you know, brings out returns, it's not going to be the same money you invested. So that is the principle everywhere. You look at where we are today. Why are they provoking God to his blessings? Their lifestyle. Not unbelievers, but you can see they will they give beyond your imagination. You see all the all the factors that are producing one thing or the other, they mapped out the, 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 the quantity for charity. And they give it give it without any just that not for, for charity. So what are they doing? These are the seed that they are sowing that are making their fame or their or their or their, or their factories to you know 
keep on growing. There is nothing you can do about that. These are the principles of, you know, prosperity, and that is it. And you can see all people are taking advantage. And you'll be wondering, these are unbelievers, they don't know God. Yeah, they don't know God, but when it comes to the area of, you know, uh, prosperity, Jesus says, give. Whether I believe or unbeliever, it shall be given unto you. So God is the owner of all flesh. He created everyone, both male and female, both believer and unbeliever. So anyone that follows this principle, obviously, will provoke him to great and wonderful blessing. So that is the word, you know, why God is bringing to our knowledge, what we need to do. After attending the level of righteousness that he expected of us, we need to add to the other, you know, to the second phase of what makes life a fulfilled life. Because we can live like righteous and live throughout the days of our life righteously at the end. And we'll be striving, you know, struggling to even pay bills. These are the open doors. These are the things that brings opportunity because the, the, the power of this very scripture is not in the hand of man, it's in the hand of God. So you can be very, very strong and powerful, but when it comes to this, you, you can be rich. If maybe riches comes as a result of you know, self-effort or strength, human strength, I think those the ones that are doing a hard job would have been the richest, but because they invested much, much energy, but at the end, you see that the input will be very little. But through this process, God knows how to open doors and do whatever. You reap beyond your labor. Says the liberal soul shall be made fat. Again, in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. And he that watereth shall be watered himself. It's, it's, it's a biblical principle. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Like, begat like, you know, just like a illustration, begat like, begat like goodness, begat goodness. Mercy begat mercy. If we expect uncommon blessings from God, we need to provoke God first. How do we provoke him? This is the unutterable principle of the scripture. God expects us to be knowledgeable. Because we wonder, why are we not blessed? Why are we not? Yeah, they, they, he, has, he, has, he has given his word. They have done, he has finished his work many years ago and expects us to understand how everything works. Sparing sowing leads to lean harvest. Bountiful sowing leads to overflowing harvest. As we can see in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Verse 6 to 7. We always reap the same kind that we have sown, though the harvest always surpasses the sowing in quantity. Just as I've explained, if we are willing to sow, obviously you will reap, just like practical, you know, Jesus always use, uses, you know, illustration that will be not that will, that will not be far away from people's understanding. A farmer went out to sow. He always uses, you know, a kind of something that you will not, you'll be wondering what, 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 what is a farmer? Every, every, even a, a, a newborn baby knows about, you know, farming. You look at the bush over there, you will see something. That is how, that is, that, that, that is, that is, that is the simplest illustration you can ever give to anyone. So without giving out something to the ground, you don't expect anything to come up. So the Bible says, cast your, you know, your, your, your seed upon the, upon the sea, and you will find it in a due season. So it's not something that, ah, I just want to see the fire believe. Follow the biblical principle. You spread out your seed. What is, what, what is happening in the Western world today? You see them generously spreading out their seed. They don't bother, they don't mind, they don't care. But at the end, you see the turnover coming around, revolving on daily basis. And you see the people that you can even go to the, to the, to the, to the highest level to make sure that they frustrate human beings, human's life. And you see them today suffering like no man's business. That is it. Because that very heart 
that brings down heaven is not there. And there is no how you can make miracle. It's not possible because every every gift comes from above. Whether 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 it is some believer that is blessed or all gifts come, every good gift comes come from above. So God looks to high at He looks at His word and fulfill what what He has said because He has said that as they you know heaven is high above. So it's his own thought. Why is that his thought? The only word that comes out from his mouth shall not return unto him void. They must accomplish what they have sent it for. So this is the this is the this is the way to provoke God's blessings. Righteousness alone is not enough. Give and they shall be given to you as far as I've read in you know in my church, in Luke chapter 8, verse 38. If we expect some common watering from God. We must engage in the bountiful watering of his kingdom. Very, very important. When we give, obviously, we will be expecting God's reciprocation, his return. Believing, waiting for God's kindness. If we have attained to the level of his expectation in righteousness, if we have sincerely, you know, give without without ulterior motive, then we will have another. quality of life that will help to bring down heaven. That is faith, believing that what God says, he will do. We have sown. Just like a farmer, at the appropriate time there will be harvest. So while we are believing, waiting for God's kindness, a lot of challenges will come, but that is where you see the power of overcoming trials, kills in. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 1 to 16, if you can may permit, if not, I will just summarize it. In Matthew chapter 20, It's, 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 it's a story every one of us knows about. From verse 1, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an husband, a householder, sorry, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he has agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his harvest, in his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing, standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth hour, sixth and ninth hour, and did likewise. Verse six, and about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said unto them, Why stand ye, ye here all the idle? They said unto him, Because no man has hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall we shall you receive. So when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the steward, Call the laborers and give them their hiring, beginning from, beginning from the last unto the first. Then when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they, like, they likewise received every man a penny. 
And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heart and, and heat of the day. But he has said one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that. Take that is thine and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Praise the Lord. You see what we are talking about? How riches come. It doesn't come by accident. That is why Jesus used this very practical illustration. How the kingdom of God works. How prosperity and every good thing comes. God is the one that is the husbandman that are hiring for laborers. People that were legitimately hired agreed on what to be paid. It's every human being on earth has a war right and justice before God. But what differentiates man from each other is what we're talking about. The redeemed. Then these are the people that has that very, you know, uncommon privilege. Someone in the world laboring for years, no output. Then all of a sudden, someone that has not wrought any labor, eventually he, he dominated and stuff. So you'll be wondering why this individual has been there. So that is exactly the, I mean, the, the, the word Jesus, how Jesus Christ is describing the kingdom. God will have compassion. It's not maybe, you know, he called everybody together, but other people have labored from morning to night. Another set of people have labored for one hour. So that person that have labored for one hour and the same way with the people that have started the journey, you know, many hours ago. So it's not, it's not, it's not all about your effort. It's not all about your, you know, your, your, your human resources or your wisdom or your intellectual power. It is all about the grace of God. And that is why the rules, the principle, the lay down rules should be followed. Because how God does it is not our, it's not our business. But from the description or from the counsel, from the guidelines of the scripture, we can understand very well how it works. Because sometimes what makes it difficult for people to be good to others, you will be wondering, when will I reap? If you're looking at, at, at any human being, you will make progress in this earth. Because man is man, and man can never change. It's only those that have been touched that you can see the outcome of the inner man that is in that. Outside that, Man has been naturally how God made him. God created man in his image. But devil came and polluted what God made. And that has made the whole earth what it is today. So it is very, very important. Believing, waiting for God's kindness. Because you've done what you're supposed to do. So there should be an element of faith. There should be an element of belief that, yeah, if not, if not, tomorrow, if not today, tomorrow. Most of us today that are doing what we are doing, you know, many years ago, you thought maybe it's something that will not be, you will not be dreaming about at all. You will not, if that is not possible. But you are busy working and laboring, not minding because, you know, this is the right thing to do and you are doing it. God knows that at the point in time, he needs to change every situation because that is his word. But at the process, maybe uh, like a farmer, along the line, you are discouraged and you feel, well, this, I think I, I've avoided enough, nothing is coming out. Let me just abandon that. Another person will reap your labor. So believing and waiting for God's kindness. Uncommon blessing is, an, is a manifestation of God's kindness. It is uncommon kindness to work for one hour, but to be paid for 12 hours. This is God's favor that beyond that is beyond level, ability and strength. It is enrichment beyond effort and entitlement. By strength shall no man prevail. If you are waiting, maybe it is, it is nine pound twenty or whatever that you will use to be a billionaire. It is impossible. But God can give you wisdom to invent one thing or the other before. My Zuckerberg and all these guys that are making billions, you know, on daily basis. What, what did they have two heads? No, it's one. 
if you look at how they started, it's like a, you know, it's just you know, a PHP just started coding. But do you know the secrets of what makes them rich? When they were still students and they were doing all this, you know, uh, PHP coding, and they were trying to see how to resolve people's problem. That was how Facebook started. They are programmers. So from there, God saw the hearts. And before I know it, a lot of subscription. And before I know it, they started, if you look at their first, because they, their first uh, 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 source code that they started with is something unimaginable. But from there, money is coming, they're advancing. Now the level where they are is something you cannot, the sophisticated technology that they are using. So what are we talking about? When you look at their old the starting point, you discover that yeah, it's not no man can with by strength shall no man prevail. So you simply you 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 line it up with the word of God. You understand that all these are not just mere story. These are practical things. If those individuals were to be okay now, when to, to, when you work every you know every, every month your uh, monthly salary. And get to where you will, they won't be there for forever. But with little, with little, I'm telling you little, because uh, by the grace of God, we can see exactly how everything started. With little, with little, they became what they are today. But if you don't know this, you know the fundamental history. You may be thinking that they're business, they maybe this people they have their PHP. They were just you know, and there's not maybe with. As the things keep on progressing, they now keep on expanding, expanding the technology that they're using today. So that is what got inspiration because you, 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 by strength shall no man prepare, simple and short. So the best thing to do, being people that have been called to understand this very rule, we need to do what? We need to be obedient. Waiting and believe it. He told us people that were hired, the list that we labored for one hour, they were paid like the one that have labored for two hours, five hours. So that what is that telling us? Only if we can do what he asks us to do, how he will make the miracle to happen, how he will bless lives, how he will make us what he wants to be, that is not our business. Our business is to do what? To be obedient to his word. Finally, bountiful wealth from our great king in Deuteronomy chapter eight. Verse 17 and 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 to 18. For all the firstborn, sorry, am I reading? Sorry. Yes, and thou say in thy heart. My power and the might of thy hand has gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with thee, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Praise the Lord. In Psalms, 30 verse 5. I will come back to the channel, but let's just read uh, some five. 30 verse 5. Mm -hmm. 
for this for his anger endured but a moment in his favor is life weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning bountiful wealth from our great king the children of israel god made promise to abraham that he would give his seed the land of canaan after 400 years Every reasonable human being is supposed to conclude and decide that that very promises has been something of, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it's just maybe an empty promises that God wanted to use to you know, motivate Abraham. But that's not God. God knows in his diary when that very action will be triggered. He hinted Abraham. He told you that he's children will be in a foreign land but after so 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 400 he will do the land so for someone that well that that, that that is not knowledgeable will be thinking that maybe what what are they talking about since we've been hearing all this word it has been like that but do you know in god's diary there is nothing like forgetfulness he has his but that was why he, you know, he told Abraham because if paraventure we didn't, he didn't, we, we didn't hear or it was not documented, probably we may conclude in our heart that well, God just made it by accident. But he told them earlier, he told Abraham earlier, exactly at the appointed time when men has forgotten, God took them to that promised land where other people have labored. They didn't build any house. They didn't cultivate any land. You come into a mansion, it becomes yours. You come into a land that I mean abundant, it becomes yours all of a sudden. So that is exactly what Moses was telling the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Don't, 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 don't think that you have made every success you made in life by your own effort. Don't let that never key in your head. Because you're not smarter than others. You are not stronger than others. You are not wiser than others. But God has given you that privilege, though you may not understand. There are smarter, there are wiser, there are intelligent people more than you. That was how, you know, they become what they are. It is God that gives you the power to make wealth. You may have all the wisdom, but if you don't have, you are not healthy, what are you going to do? You'll be thinking on how to invent the aeroplane or how to invent one uh, 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 up or the other. Unhealthy human being. It is someone that is said that will think about what he will do tomorrow. So God gives you health. It's an indication that he, he can give you wisdom and knowledge to reason, to think about how to make headway. Some other people that are drunk, they don't think about future, they don't think about tomorrow, all their own was just to see today and let today come to an end. They are human beings. Who inspires them? So that tells you that it's not by your, it is not by power, by might, or by the Spirit of God. Bountiful wealth from our great king. He has it all in his palm. He gives it to whosoever he will. Give, he shall be given unto you good measure, press down and running over. He said, Christ came with my, Christ came that we might have abundant life. His grace, in his grace, he has exchanged his riches for our poverty. And he continued to make his grace abound towards us. Because of our time, if you read the second Corinthians chapter 8, Verse 9, and let, let's read it quickly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Second Corinthians chapter 8, I read verse 9.
Verse 9 says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through though he was rich, yet for your sake he might be rich. He saw how God in the flesh died without hope, died without any property. Does that look strange? No. He did it intentionally. So these are the things that you will lay hold on. When you have done what you're supposed to do, you will stand to challenge, not only to challenge God, because God is not part. You will start to challenge the devil who hinders people from making progress. That you are legitimately for what belongs to you. Because poverty is not in the diary of God concerning his children. You can't be a worthy, a worthy king. And you know that actually he has obedient and humble children. And they will be begging bread. Now, that very king will do all his best to satisfy the needs of his children. The obedient ones. The one that they will ask, do this, and they will do it without any question. Don't do this. It's not good for you. And they will obey. So in times of need, do you think that such person will see those his children and so, I mean, in, in a miserable situation and they will be rejoicing? No. So when we have done what you're supposed to do, Christ paid for them not to be worthy. You are from social lineage and from your own you know, family circle. You are not meant to be this. Because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can stand and say, devil, you've missed your way. This very direction you are going, you are not permitted to go towards the direction because payment has been made. So the devil will understand and give way. Not too much, you know, too much prayer or prayer or, or fasting. Knowledge, obedience. Can we, not even that we give you the boldness because that boldness comes from God. When you are when you are obedient to God, no, spirit of boldness, that's what will reduce the devil. You, you, you don't you see your family well, you see this and that? yeah, that's fine. But Bible says if anyone is a creature, he's a new creature, all things has passed away. Whatever you have done with the ancestors, I was not there with them. So you can sort it out with them. So for you not to come to cause any trouble on my way, and he will understand because Jesus died that through his poverty we will be rich. And God is not joking. But the parents of Calvary is not, it's not funny. It's not something anyone can bear. Nailing on the cross. It's not something any boy, no one can bear. I mean, so that is it. That is the payment. He is the one that grants us the power to get wealth, that sends us wealth in order to establish his covenant with us. Have you toiled all the night of previous years and have caught nothing? The question. The glorious morning launched out into the deep according to the Lord's command and lay down your nets for a drought. You know, many, 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 many years one have been sowing and believing and believing and nothing is coming up. Read the scripture. There is nothing, so long as you are doing the right thing, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. God is not a debtor. He keeps to his word. And nothing can ever change him. He says, once have I vowed by my holiness, he didn't vow by the power that is behind or the power that has been by my holiness, I shall not lie. So that tells you that God is supreme. There is no other being greater than him. Because he would have mentioned it. Once have I vowed by my, by me, 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 uh, my partner, my co-creator. Uh, and also he made reference to that. To immortal thing, why God cannot lie. He didn't choose to vow with any other thing. He vowed by himself. And that means every power, every authority is within his jurisdiction. That is where we we'll draw the curtain tonight as we will go to the Lord in prayer. 
I want you this night to appreciate the Lord. I want you to thank the Lord for the privilege of being alive, for the privilege of being saved. For one to be saved is by His grace. Because it is only salvation that will give you understanding to all these things we are talking about. If you are not saved, all this will just be like a quack and boo story. It will, go, it will go into this year, it will go out from the other year because the power to understand the concept is not there. So it will not abide. So thank God for that privilege of being saved because that is the starting point. If you are saved, God, you, are, you, you are positioned to get inspiration from God. And that is the secret of every success in life. People that are invented one thing or another, they don't they get himself, he said, drop out. So this, all these things we are talking is by inspiration. One will stand and the, something will be coming up. Do you know that this is something that can be done? Is something possible? And with the help of you know, a support from everywhere, it, they started processing such, 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 such thought. That idea will come to life. That is the, the old the invented things you are using in this world today. That is how they come. So that tells you that is God. Praise yes, God. Friend, I want you to thank the Lord. I appreciate the Lord for this privilege. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, let's continue to be on the mood of prayer. But we are what the servant of the Lord have taught us this hour. For working God, God's blessings. How can we provo provoke God's blessings? By doing what the Father have told us to do. So we start with uh, Proverbs chapter 11, 25. Say the liberal soul shall be made fat. He that watereth shall be watered also. I mean, it's telling us that our God is not a debtor. Once we have done our own part of the system, the Lord is willing to do his own. So we are going to pray this hour. And the Lord will give us the grace to obey all his commandments, to do all that he has commanded us to do. Because without that, there's no way Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's pray, brethren. Let's commit ourselves before the Lord this hour. Ask God for forgiveness. In any way we have come short of his glory. In any way we have not been able to measure up to his requirements. That the Lord will have mercy this hour. At anything that will be of hindrance for our prayers this night, and the Lord will have mercy. And the Lord will forgive us. So that his blessing upon our life this night will be full. Let's pray, brethren. Father, we thank you this hour. We bless you. We worship you. We exalt thy holy name. Thank you because you are a holy God. Lord, we pray this hour committing our life, our family, the church in general to your hands. And Lord, you have mercy upon us. 
In any way we come short of your glory. In any way, Lord, we have not been able to measure up to your requirements. Father, we pray this day. The Lord, you have mercy. The Lord, you cleanse us. The Lord, you give us the grace to overcome every distraction, to overcome every manipulation of the enemy, and to obey your word in totality, so that your blessings will be full in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. In Matthew, he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We are going to pray by the grace of God. We have been doing our best. We are going to pray that the mercy of God, as we continue to do all his commandments, be merciful to our brethren, to the people outside there, that they, we, we obtain mercy from the Lord, that the Lord will water us, that the Lord will bless us spiritually, physically, financially, materially, and otherwise, that the blessings of God upon our life will be full. Let's pray, brethren. Pray this hour. Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your word that you have said. You say, blessed are the merciful, for we shall obtain mercy. You say, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. Father, we thank you for this your word. We pray, O oh God, that this word, O oh Lord, will be fulfilled in our life this day. That each and every one of us, as we give unto your kingdom our time, our money, Father Lord, we pray that we will never lack any good thing. We pray that as many that obey these commandments, Father, we pray this day. The Lord, you will water your people. Spiritually, you will water us. Physically, you will water us. Materially, you will water us. And there are blessings upon our lives will be full this day. We thank you, Father Lord. We bless you for what you have done. For Jesus' name we pray. We go straight to Psalm 102, where the pastor have just read. I'm going to take our prayer point there also. Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. He said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the same time is come. We are going to pray. This is the word of God. The Lord has promised us. He said, The time to favor us is here. Say, we shall have mercy upon Zion. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her, yet the set time is come. We are going to pray that the Lord will have mercy upon us in this nation. That the Lord will favor us. That the Lord will favor our children. That the Lord will favor the church. That the all that we put our hand to do, that the Lord will bless it. 
Let's pray, brethren. This is the word of God. The Lord has promised us. He said, this is the time. That means nothing will hinder it. As the Lord has said it, this is our time of blessing. This is the time of our favor. In our working place, the Lord will favor us. In any, in any office we go, the Lord will favor us. In any place we stand, the favor of God will be upon our life. In the schools, the Lord will favor our children. Let's pray, brethren, because the Lord has said it, and so will it be in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray this day, as you have said it, so will it be in the life of every member of this church that, Lord, you will favor us in this nation. You will favor us in this nation. This is the time. This is our time of blessing. This is our time of upliftment. This is our time of abundance. And Father, we pray that, Lord, you will favor us. And, Lord, you will bless your people. As your word has said, so will it be in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's go again to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17. The throne of man, chapter 8, chapter 17, and I say in the heart, my power and my the might of my hand have gotten me this word. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get word, that he may establish his covenant, which is sway unto thy fathers, as it is this day. We are going to pray. This is the promise of God. He said, it is the Lord that gives us the power to get wealth because he said he will establish the covenant which he swore unto our fathers that today he will establish that covenant. Let's pray this hour. As we are praying, we are praying for both our children and the Lord you give us the power to get wealth. You give us the wisdom to create wealth. Money is not wealth. What rules the world is ideas. When you have idea, when you have wisdom, you are sure to have wealth. Let's pray this hour that the Lord will give our children the Lord will give us divine wisdom, divine knowledge, divine insight to create wealth, divine ideas to create wealth, where that it will draw men unto the presence of God, where that it will make people to see that the glory of God is in our life. Where that will draw men unto the living God. Where that when people see us, they will see, yes, this is the finger of God. Let's pray, brethren, that the Lord will grant us the wisdom, the power, the knowledge, the idea to create wealth. And the Lord 
will establish this covenant in our life, in the life of our children, in this nation, that we'll be blessed in this country, in our going out, in our coming in, we'll be blessed. That people will call us blessed. In any way we go, we will be a blessing to our generation, to our mates. Let's pray, brethren. Let's pray it in. This is what the promise of God is the promise of God upon our life. As the Lord has said it, so will it be. Let's cry unto the Lord because the Lord has said it. He said, Bountiful words from our great king. It is our the Lord who gives us this wisdom, this knowledge to make words. Let's call upon him this hour. And the Lord, our God, as he has promised us, let us come to fulfillment. Let us come to fulfillment. In our life this day, in the life of our children, Father Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray this hour that Lord, as you have promised us, and you will give us the wisdom, the power, the anointing to create wealth. Lord, we pray, let that word be fulfilled in every soul, in every child, in every man, in every woman, in every youth, in this church. We thank you, Father Lord. We bless you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Psalm 26, verse 22. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father. No. Sorry, please, I'm reading the wrong place. Genesis chapter 26, verse 22. And he removed from hence and dig another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it. Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. This is the handwork of God. This is the promise of God. The Lord has made a room for us in this nation that we will prosper, that we will be enlarged. We will be fruitful, spiritually fruitful, financially fruitful. Let's pray this hour that the Lord will fulfill this promise today. Let's pray that as men that have been struggling with us, as men that are saying they cannot make it, today, the Lord will silence them. And today, the promise of God will manifest upon every life of this day. Let's pray this hour. Father, we thank you for your word. Almighty Jehovah, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Father Lord, because you have wiped away all our tears. The Lord, you have removed all our struggles, all the sufferings in the past. Father, you said, we see them no more. All the Egyptians fighting against us, blocking our progress. Father, today, you have said, we see them no more. You said, Lord, you will make a room for us in this nation. We will prosper in this nation. We will fruitful in this nation. And no power, no principality will will oppose it because your word is final. And Father, we pray this hour 
as he have said it, let it become accomplished in every life this day. We thank you, Father, we bless you, Lord, for you have done it. For in Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray this hour and commit the servant of the Lord, the Lord have used to bless us this hour, and the Lord will equip him, and the Lord will strengthen him, and more of the anointing of God upon his life, more of his glory of God, and next time when we come, we have much more to provide for us. Let's pray that the Lord will bless him spiritually, physically, materially, and otherwise. Father, we thank you again, we bless you this hour. We worship you for your servant and used to bless us this night. We pray, oh God, that more of your glory upon his life, more of your anointing upon his life, more of your insight upon his life. Lord, we pray for divine blessings, spiritual blessings, physical blessings, material blessings. Lord, we pray that, Lord, you will keep him. And Lord, he will live to enjoy your blessing upon this land. We thank you, we bless you, Lord, because you have done it. On Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you this hour for the blessings. We thank you for the answer prayers. We thank you, Father Lord, for your word that have the final say in our life this day. And we pray, Lord, as we have called upon your holiness this night, we pray that, Lord, you will grant us all our requests. We thank you, Father, we bless you. For it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Over to you, Pastor. Great. Praise Hallelujah. Um, I think just about uh, Pastor Travel, uh, and uh, we will always uh, remember him in our prayer individually, and some of our brothers also that have traveled as well, so that the Lord will protect them in the journey and make their heart trip successful and bring them back successful as well. So I think uh, there is no much announcement. Our fellowship is still uh, here in Motherwell by Sunday. Then before then, we will still now come up with the latest uh, announcement or development. So, Brad Clement, is there any? Sir? So, is there any announcement? Uh, yes, there is no more. Abdul, I am not using them. And this. The global crusade is starting tomorrow, so uh, okay, Pastor okay, said okay. we should announce that uh, each and every one of us will be able to join the so that's the announcement. All right, we will have about the global crusade that will all the blessed endeavor to join for divine blessings as well. So let's share the grace together. Want to go by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Service is over.